first step is to stretch our glaze on nice and evenly from one end to the other in the direction of the grain. In this case, the length of the box top will be the direction of the grain. And now I'm going to soften with the Badger Blender across that brushwork. Uh, I just want to basically remove most of the, the brush marks uh, that happened when I stretched the glaze on. And now with my dampened rag, I'm going to go ahead and twist that. And the idea was to create a kind of radiating figure pattern uh, out from the, from the front edge of the box. And that's just because I want it to, to kind of uh, frame the script that I'm putting in. Notice that I'm kind of dabbing and pulling glaze at the same time. That's referred to as walking glaze. Um, now throughout this process I'm going to be removing some glaze and, and softening here and there. Uh, I'm going to show the whole, the whole thing because it, it does take some effort to get this just right. Um, so I'm stretching the glaze, I'm sorry, softening the glaze in the direction of the rag work at first and then I'm going to very gently start to work across my, my rag work, just barely using the tips of the brush. I want <clears throat> Nice subtle undulation of color um, with that with that uh, that figure glaze. So getting the materials that is the glaze and the colorant right, the tool work, all this is very important to making this happen. Um, the details for that are in the ebook, and you can click to download that ebook for free anytime and. <clears throat> There's just a lot of information in there that's going to help with this process for you as far as materials and tool use and stuff like that. So again, working kind of across and just what I'm doing here is focusing on on the color and the variation. I'm, I'm striving for a consistent look across the entire top, which means removing a little more here and there and then softening and taking a look again and it, it, that's basically the process. I also don't want to remove too much glaze because that can make it look dull. I want it to be exciting and, and interesting and active but I also don't want any hard edges from brushes or from the brush or the rag so it just takes practice and time um, and of course you're you know, part of this is is um, how much your glaze will let you will let you do this kind of stuff. If it starts to set up, you can get in trouble. But again, I have information about that in the ebook that'll help. So, um, making some final adjustments here. I'm really liking how this looks. I've got a nice, consistent, radiating figure across the across the top, and I think this is going to work out very nicely for for my final figure for this maple. In our real wood model, which you can see in the ebook, um, it's very similar to this grain that we've created. And there are there are a few very intense lines that kind of lie on top of that last figure layer that we just created. So I'm recreating that here. Basically, I just take this the same glaze from the figure layer and I, I lay on a fat line with the liner and then I come back with the square tip brush and just add a little bit of activity and, and stretch that line a bit. So you'll notice that I'm, that I'm following the existing lines that are kind of hidden now underneath, uh, underneath our figure layer. And again, just stretching it with the, with the tip of the, of the square tip synthetic brush. And this step isn't isn't totally necessary if you're happy with with how much your your grain lines that went on in the in the previous step uh, show through. That's fine. You don't have to do this. But I liked it because I liked how it looked in the real wood model. Again, that's in the ebook. So uh, the the lines are broken in the real in the real wood version, and um, that is they're not totally consistent. It's just kind of a few areas that of line that sit kind of sit on top of the of the figure layer. 
Now we're going to move on to creating lapis lazuli in the next video.